let's just get this out of the way first. If you've started a minimalist journey, but you don't feel like you've achieved it yet, don't worry about it. It's all about, it's all about playing the game. It's all about doing what feels right for you. I don't think minimalism is particularly prescriptive. I think it's, it's more like descriptive. Like it's not about setting rules. It's about describing a way of life, a mentality. I love the trend towards minimalism that has been kind of coming over the last couple of years. Personally, it's really helped me work through some things because I'm the kind of person who buys shit for the sake of buying shit. I think retail therapy is so often characterized as like the girls at the, you know, going shopping. But in the age of cheap, cheap electronics and gadgets, as well as the availability of online shopping, it's been a thing for people like me as well. And I'm pretty good at convincing myself that I need something, even if I don't even want it. What I want is the satisfaction of going through the motions of, of purchasing it and of waiting for it to arrive. I actually made a video the other day where I spoke about minimalism and I said, that I was a minimalist whilst showing you around my room that was full of shit. And I'm surprised that I didn't get called out on that. I, th I kind of thought, I was a bit worried when I was posting it, I thought people might call me out on the amount of stuff I have. I did say that I was in the process of, you know, removing some of that stuff, uh, getting rid of it. Maybe people were giving me a bit of leeway because of that, but it's the internet, so I don't really believe that. I don't know. The thing is, I do actually feel like I've got too much camera gear. There are things that I've got that I barely use and there are others that come out very rarely on rotation and then just disappear away for a while. The problem exists because of the way my arsenal of camera equipment has been built up. It was built up in fits and starts, it's piecemeal, it was cobbled together as and when I needed bits, what I could afford, when I could afford it. As a result, I've got a mixed bag of camera equipment from different manufacturers. My two favorite cameras are really disparate. It's the Sony A6300, which I'm filming this on now, and the Canon C100. Now that's a weird combination. My love of shooting wide angle, which I think comes from starting off shooting architecture back when I started first using a camera. So for each camera at the moment, I have what is like roughly equivalent to like a 15 millimeter or 16 millimeter wide angle lens. That means that I've got a Sony 10 to 18, I've got a Canon 10 to 18, and then for a full frame camera, a 16 to 35. That's three lenses that are basically the exact same thing, same field of view when used on the, the relevant cameras. It also means that I've got three different types of batteries for my cameras, not to mention the other batteries for lights, gimbals, drones, and other bits. It's tough to know what to get rid of though. The C100's got built-in NDs and XLRs, it's got no record limit, it just it looks great. But it's big, it's old, it only shoots HD at normal speed, so you know, 24, 25, 30, and that's it. And by the way, I've got two of them at the moment. The A6300 is a great compact camera, it's fantastic for making videos of myself, really low key, great for travel pictures, things like that. It's just great to have with you. It's, it's, unintrusive and and the image is relatively fantastic. It's not perfect though, it overheats, the batteries are shocking, especially when they get a little bit older. It's not the most pro looking camera when you turn up with it and the audio features, they're there but they're lacking. My other camera is the EOS R, which was, you know, a hotly debated camera, has been for the last, well, since it came out. It's really pretty good despite its numerous shortcomings. I, st I bought it as my main stills camera to go along with the C100 because it's got the you know, C-Log and stuff like that. I thought it would match up great. But I quickly started using it in place of the C100 because well, the picture just looked better out of it. The image that comes out of it is great. The autofocus is phenomenal. It's unbelievable. Literally kind of hard to believe that it works as well as it does. The 4K crop though and the lack of decent, usable, high frame rates is what's holding it back for me. It's what's holding it back. It's what's holding me back from doing some of the stuff that I really want to do with it. Should we have a count of lenses? Sony 50 mil, Sigma 18 to 35, Canon 50 mil, Canon 100 mil, macro, Canon 16 to 35, 
Sony 10 to 18, Canon 10 to 18, vintage lenses 50 mil, 35 mil, 135 mil, 28 mil, twin, no, 70 to 210. What I would ideally like is one small camera that's great for travel and filming myself, you know, super low key at events, things like that, but that also can work for my photo work because I still do quite a bit of product photography and bits of portraiture and architecture and, and general photo work. I still do that. So I need one that works well as a stills camera, but something that can also act as a B cam to a bigger video specific camera. And that bigger video specific camera needs to be video focused. It needs to be a video camera. Something that's an all-in-one solution, similar to the C100, something with ND filters built in, XLRs, good audio built in, and something that can be pretty portable, but can also be built out and you know use with a, an external recorder like the Atomos and get amazing picture quality. It also needs to use the same lens mount as the smaller camera, so I don't have to own duplicate lenses, multiples of the same lens. And that's what's led me to look at the relatively old, although kind of refreshed, FS5 Mark II. It would definitely work well with the A6300 and I could use that then for stills and the travel and as a B cam. And the FS5 would work out of the box because it's video centric. It's got the specific functions and workflow to video that I could use. And I could use all the lenses that go with the A6300 as well, because it's the same mount. The glaring issue, with this would be the lack of a full frame camera though. And since 2010, when I got my first full frame camera, I've not really been without one. I went from the Nikon D700 to the Sony A7R Mark I, and then to the ESR, ES, e, ES R. I'm starting to wonder how essential having a full frame sensor actually is. And it's something I'm gonna look at. I'm gonna look at in another video. Started comparing, seeing if I actually need it. So why not stick with Canon? Canon's got lots of good points, got lots of good things going for it, but I think it's got a really odd lens lineup now. The three, they're kind of like these three or four distinct mounts. There's the EFM, the EFS, and the EF, and the RF. So if you want a compact camera, similar to the A6000 series from Sony, then you need to use an EFM mount lens which then won't work with the C200, which would be my choice for a video camera. I would probably keep my EOS R with, you know, with its adapter because it's RF. So you need to adapt it to EF, which is basically native, but it's, it's not, it's, you know, it's never going to be native because you've still got, you don't, you don't get the benefits of the mount basically. And that's a shame because the RF mount is phenomenal, but it would mean having duplicate lenses again because the RF mount doesn't work with the C200. So you hamper the ESR so you can use EF lenses. It's just, it's muddied, it's muddied. I'd end up having to duplicate lenses as well. But what a time to be thinking of leaving Canon. With the, the C500 Mark II just come out, that's a phenomenal looking camera. Then there's the R5 and the R6 and other rumored cameras, which seem to be very high spec. They're all coming out this year, so, you know, supposedly, hopefully, whatever. I'm not that fussed on those. But I don't really care about the, you know, the newest and the highest spec cameras. What I want is affordable quality with a low environmental cost and minimal, uh, like a minimal setup that doesn't get in the way of me making videos. So why not some other brand? Well, I was genuinely, I've really been deeply thinking about the BMP CC 4K, which seems like a great option for video quality at a super affordable price, but it has to be built up in the same way that a hybrid camera has to be built up. It has to have rigging put around it as extra batteries to make it work. And having to build it up into something usable, it's just something I can't be bothered with. And sometimes it's great. Sometimes I really enjoy doing it, but most of the time I just want to set, I want to get my lighting set up. I want to get audio figured out. I want to make sure everything in the scene looks great. I don't want to be fussing building up a camera. Also the micro four thirds and the lens, like I'm not, I don't know, I'm just not interested in fucking about with a new, sis, a new lens system. I know you can adapt onto it and whatever just doesn't work for what I want. Maybe Panasonic. I've kept an eye on the Panasonic S1H. 
and I think it's a really interesting camera, but it doesn't work for me in two ways. One, I would have to get rid of every single bit of camera and lens equipment. I'd have to sell everything because it would be a complete refresh, which is a pain. It also means building up a hybrid camera to work as a video camera, batteries and audio and everything on it, and it doesn't work just out of the box. Also, I'm pretty sure I don't need 6K at the moment. Fuji's got some pretty similar issues to Panasonic. I absolutely love Fuji. I love what they do. And if I was starting from scratch, and especially if I was just doing photography, I would absolutely go with Fuji. But they don't have a video camera. They don't have a video specific camera. And it would mean starting from scratch. I loved that original X100. That was probably my favorite camera of all time. Genuinely, genuinely love that camera. But Fuji has those issues. I've also kept an eye out on Zcam, but again, it's a build out. You have to get it out and attach a load of stuff to it to make it work, which is it's something that's involved and it's on the day of shooting. It's just another thing to have to think about. They do look like a really interesting option though, and I, I think I'll kind of keep my eye on them. I looked at things like the Kinefinity, but that's kind of like feels like a movie camera. Again, it's a lot of setup, a big workflow, kind of like the Reds. It's just a lot, a lot of stuff to do. And it's not really what, it's not built for the kind of work that, that I do, I don't think. Uh, what I need is something that's more for interviews and documentary, that kind of style of video camera. And I'm purposely saying video camera because I know, like even I often say cinema camera when I talk about the C100, and it's because it is their cinema line, and these companies use the terminology cinema line. Fair enough, this, these are video cameras. Let's just call them what they are. So Sony looks really good to me, and I know I'm talking about an older camera, but there are more important things than having just the latest stuff. If I can have a minimal kit with only the lenses that I need and still get pretty amazing footage, all while having a lower environmental impact by buying second hand and at a lower cost then i can use the money and the reduced weight and gear and time and set up to shoot more projects and i can use the extra money to travel more and and just create more interesting stuff and i think that at the end of all this is the most important thing and a lot of people watching your videos and looking at your photos won't see everything that goes into it they they won't notice a slight drop in quality if it means that you create more and you can create better. And if you have more fun doing it and less stress because you've got less faff with all the equipment. That's my view on it anyway. Let me know what you think down in the comments and I'll see you next time.